Now I'm going to sort out the HDAs. I'm going to set up all the parameters to make them more accessible to the user. I'll also fix up the naming conventions and do general maintenance in order to make the nodes easier to use. The first thing that I'm going to do is allow the user to put in custom curves. I'm just going to make some room for myself here. And then I'm going to bring in a switch node. And I'll just hook that up. Next I'll bring in an object merge node. And I'm going to connect the object merge node to the switch node. And the switch node is going to be driven by an expression. And that expression is going to check the number of points from the object merge node and see if they are more than zero. So it's going to be if endpoints for object one, which is the object merge node, is greater than one, then it is going to be true. And if it is not, then it is going to be false. In the if statement, one will be true and zero will be false. I will now make test geometry in order to make sure that the input works correctly. I'll add in a geometry node for our test curve. We'll enter the node and add a curve node. And then I will go into the top view and draw the points. I'll call this node test curve one. To use the curve in the HDA, we will expose the object's parameters by dragging it into the HDA's parameter menu. I will then rename the parameter to user curve. I'll click on apply and then accept to save the change. And then I will access the HDA's parameter menu. And I will drag and drop our test curve onto it. As you can see, our new curve is now driving the road. We now want to be able to add extra detail to our curves. And the first way we'll do this is by adding a resample node. I, want, I personally want to be able to control it by using number of segments rather than segment length. So I'll turn on maximum segments and I'll turn off maximum segment lengths. The resample node doesn't just affect the look of the node by adding points. It also allows you to define the interpolation of the curve through those points. The treat polygon as parameter allows you three choices straight edges, subdivision curves, and interpolation curves. To understand the difference between them, I'm just going to show you a quick example. I'm now going to make a very simple curve, and this curve will have three points. This is basically going to be a diagonal line running through the origin, with the points at 1, 1, minus 1, minus 1, and 0, 0. I will then add a resample node to it. I will not spend much time trying to explain straight edges as that should be self-evident, but we will start with subdivision curves. We will have a Bezier subdivision, which is using the points to interpolate the curve. And this will lead to a curve which is on the inside of these points. Now if we switch to interpolating curves, you will see that we have a curve that passes through all the points and is interpolating based on the tangent of those points. And this will pass on the outside of the points. And this can lead to a quite substantial change in look and feel for the curves. Unfortunately, I've lost part of the scene here, so I need to re-record this and the scene is slightly different. I have added a curve folder. Now I'll now start exposing parameters to the HDA, starting with the segments. 
For the moment I'm going to leave the segment's name as it is, as this should be sufficient. Next I will add the target polygons as. I'll then apply it and I'll open the parameter menu. I'll just check that the segments as well as the interpolation will work correctly from the HDA. I now have the basic curve parameters that I want, so I'll now add a folder and I'll name the folder Road. This will contain the parameters which apply from the Sweep node. I'll start by exposing the columns parameter. Then I'll need to be able to reverse the normals if necessary. So I will bring in the reverse cross section parameter. In this case, the reverse columns parameter is checked as on. And I just want to change the default. So I'll go to the channels menu and change the default to off. Once that is applied, I will just go to my HDA and I will change the parameter to be on for the moment. Now with the number of columns you can see that we have a problem and that the intersection no longer works properly with the road. We will sort this problem out shortly. Before we finish that however, we will finish adding the parameters to edit the curve's appearance on the sweep node. To control the width of the road, we can use two parameters which already exist within the sweep node. These parameters are the apply scale along curve and the scale ramp parameters. I expose these parameters by dragging and dropping them onto the parameter menu. Now we will fix the problem with the intersection where it meets the start points or end points of the road. The way that the start points and end points are currently set up means it will only use either the first two or the last two points in the road. And we want to set that up so it will automatically adjust for however many points the road has. For the start points we are currently selecting the first two points. Instead we want to have the value be relative to the amount of columns we have. We will copy the columns value and in the start value we will paste the relative reference. What we will see is that we are lacking one point. So in order to fix this we will add one to the columns value. Now if we test the start points we will see that the curve maintains all of the points at the beginning of the road. Next, we will repeat the process for the endpoints. We will copy the columns to the endpoints and add one to that value. And now we should have the correct behavior for the endpoints. And we should also see that the intersection has also updated correctly for the endpoints as well. The, the current default curve is not as usable as I would like it to be. I would like for the default curve to start out as a straightforward curve so as to be easier to use. To do this I will clear out the existing points. I will turn on snapping and then I'll draw the line from negative 1 to 0 to 1. Then I will rename the nodes to make the network more clear. Finally, I want to edit the type properties and I want to go to the node tab. 
And now I'll go to the editable nodes parameter and I will look up my road and I will look up my default curve. This will allow me to edit the default curve in a game engine using Houdini Engine. That should cover the basics of the road for now. Next we will take a look at the intersection. That should give us our basic controls for the road. We will now want to set up our interface for the intersection. This will also contain a bit of a simplification of how the intersection works. The first thing to do is expose the object paths by dragging and dropping them onto the HDA's parameters. Since I do not want a value for any of these parameters, I will go to the Channels tab and delete the default value for all of these parameters. I will then rename them and label them correctly. As you can see, the add nodes are now giving errors. I will need to reconnect these nodes, but this time I will not connect them in the object merge nodes. I will instead go to the HDA interface and drag and drop the road nodes onto their relevant slots. The first change I'll make to the intersection is to rename the add node to basic intersection. Currently I'm not able to choose whether I want to use the start points or end points. This is not the behavior I want. To change this we're going to set up a basic switching system and we're going to start by bringing in a blast node. I'll connect the blast node to our object merge node. In the blast node, I'll set it to points. I'll select the endpoints group and I'll change it to delete non selected so that I'm only selecting the endpoints. Now we have all the points at the end of the road and we no longer actually need the add node to create the line. If we were to put our blast node into our merge, and I'll just organize that a little bit. We can now disconnect this add node. And now if we activate the intersection, we will see that it works without the need for the add node. I will now add a switch node. I'll then duplicate the blast node. I'll change the group in the new blast node to start points. I can now use the switch node to define which side of the road the intersection will connect to. I'll then duplicate this structure and I'll connect it to the other object merge nodes. That way you'll have a switch for all three of the object merge nodes.
we will now want to add controls to our HDA. So we'll open the type properties and then I'm just going to add a separator to make it a bit neater. I'll then drag and drop the switch input onto my parameter menu. And I'm going to change the type to ordered menu. Under the menu tab I'll add an entry where the token will be zero and that will be endpoints. And then token 1 will be start points. I'll apply this and then I will open up my parameters. And you'll see that I now have a menu which will allow me to choose between the start points and the end points. And I can now switch where the intersection connects to the road. I'll make duplicates of this menu parameter and then under the channels menu I'll go to the link channels and where it says switch one input I will rename the switch so they will link to their respective switches. And they'll be able to use the HDA menu to control which sides of the road the intersection connects to for all the roads. In the next video, we'll add some controls to add detail to the intersection.